Hello, hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we will be talking about orientation. Orientation is the core of our method. What is orientation in our method? It is the relative, you see this yellow marked part. This text comes from the Oxford Dictionary and orientation can have different meanings. For example, the action of orienting someone or something relative to the points of a compass or other specified positions. That is what our method is about. The relative position or direction of something. And that something is, in our case, a structure, a monument, an ancient monument. And when we examine the orientations of ancient monuments in large quantities, we have discovered some amazing things. For example, in this yellow marked part, it says using the orientation of a building to capture energy from the sun. That is of course true, but it is also very limited. The orientation, the exact cardinal orientation of a building can also be used to research time. Because time and movements of the sun is sort of the same. When time goes by, the sun moves and if you have a proper cardinally oriented building, you can measure time with this. One of the best examples of measuring time by using the sun is Yantar Mantar in Jaipur in India. And this park contains uh, a lot of different instruments, monuments, buildings to measure time. And it's very interesting. But it's also interesting is to notice that this park is cardinally oriented. And of course it is cardinally oriented because the builders are very aware of the movements of the sun and the positioning of their buildings and the positioning of their whole park. And therefore it is cardinally oriented. And it is also interesting to notice that the rest of the city surrounding Yanta Manta is non-cardinally oriented. It is oriented in an arbitrary way to a magnetic pole or to a geographical surrounding. Enough said about this. We go to a very interesting research done by Jeff Boeing. Uh, I recommend to check out his website. Jeff Boeing has done a lot of research to orientation of major cities around the world. Here you see from Bangkok down to Warsaw. It goes in alphabetical order. And you see, for example, Beijing is cardinally oriented. And I will explain later why Beijing is cardinally oriented, around what it is cardinally oriented. And that is very interesting to notice. We are the first to understand why a city is oriented around ancient buildings in the same orientation. Cities, even contemporary cities, are oriented around ancient cores ancient foundations, ancient structures, and so on. We haven't examined all the cities and why they are oriented in the way they are, because it's just too much work. But, for example, Mexico City is clockwise oriented, and it is clockwise oriented around ancient structures. Ancient structures had a lot of influence on the orientation of Mexico City. For example, cities like Berlin and London and Moscow and Rome, Rio de Janeiro, Seoul are a little bit chaotic oriented. There is not really a strong pattern to discover. But when we go to the New World, to the United States, we suddenly see something totally different happening. In a New World, a rational world, a large country, a lot of space, there is no reason to orient a city, a structure, non cardinally And you see this clearly. And it goes from Atlanta to Buffalo, Chicago, Cleveland, Dallas, Denver, Detroit, Houston, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Miami, Minneapolis, Orlando, Phoenix, Portland, Sacramento, San Francisco, Seattle, Tampa and Washington. They are all, without exception, mainly currently oriented. 
And the question is, why? Why is this the case? And I believe that answer is quite simple. Because if you are new in a very, very large country and there is hardly anything to orient yourself to, that is why the new settlers oriented themselves to the cardinals, to north, south, east and west. In which direction do you go in a large country? Do you go east or do you go west or north or south? And there are just a few examples of non-cardinal alignment. For example, Charlotte. Charlotte is a big, big mess. And some other cities like Philadelphia or St. Louis were oriented by using a compass. Because if you look back in time, at the time Philadelphia was founded, the magnetic North Pole was at approximately that direction. So it's clear that this is the reason why Philadelphia is oriented by using a compass. For example, Manhattan has this typical clockwise orientation because the founders didn't want to spoil space. So it's best to build the grid in the direction of the narrow island. It's a logical choice. So that is why Manhattan is one of the few examples of non-cardinal orientation. This is a very interesting video that I captured while browsing through Google Earth and you see the typical cardinal orientation of the whole grid. Every plot, every little city, every road, boundaries, borders, everything is cardinally oriented. Of course there are a few exceptions. It's very interesting to, to browse through these different areas of the United States. When a country is built from scratch, it is logical, it is cardinally oriented. In our research, a structure, a monument, can only have 45 degrees clockwise orientation freedom and 45 degrees counterclockwise orientation freedom. And you see this here in this short animation. And this is what we used in our research. You see three structures, A, B and C. B is ambiguously oriented. The researcher has decided to pick out the stairs as the main feature and then look at which angle it is oriented to north and it is 60 degrees, but 60 degrees is ambiguous, is ambiguous orientation. And then the correct orientation is C, it is 30 degrees clockwise. What a researcher would do is to make the stairs the main feature of the building and then look at which direction is it is oriented. And But that is a mistake because it contains an assumption and when this assumption is done once it's okay but when it's done many times in big data researches it pollutes trustworthiness of such research. And if we do what we do in large quantities, you see this map. We have examined uh, almost 400 ancient structures on the Eastern Hemisphere. You see there the locations and we have measured their orientation as well, of course. They are massively counterclockwise oriented. And if we measure the contemporary structures in all these countries, which we did in another research, uh, you will see that are as much structures counterclockwise oriented as they are clockwise oriented and they level out to zero. So they are collectively oriented to our current geographic North Pole. But when we do the same research with ancient structures, they are massively counterclockwise oriented and not just a bit counterclockwise oriented. They are counterclockwise oriented at minus 20 degrees, which is huge. And when we go to the Western Hemisphere, we have almost 550 ancient structures in our database on the Western Hemisphere. We see the same happening as on the Eastern Hemisphere, but in the other direction. They are massively clockwise oriented. And when we do the same research in these areas to contemporary buildings, it is the same story. They are as much clockwise oriented as counterclockwise oriented. So contemporary buildings are pointed on average collectively 
to our current cardinal system, to our current geographic pole. I have made a video before about this. When you take all the contemporary structures, ancient structures, like Giza or White House or Vatican or and so on and so on, Taj Mahal, and you align their northward extension over the globe, they form a large node at the North Pole. And this way you find our current geographic pole. So here, Chinese pyramid, it is currently oriented. Not all, of course, but this one is. Their northward extension runs over the North Pole, but we still don't know where the North Pole is. It's somewhere on this line. For that, we need a second structure. We go to Giza. It is also currently oriented. We draw a northward extension line. There it goes. This line also runs over the geographic pole. And it runs over the geographic pole because Giza is currently oriented. And the cross point of these two lines, that is the geographic north pole, the spin axis. And this is how you find our current geographic pole. It's a mathematical method to find our geographic pole and where the spin axis exactly is. It is there at this cross point. It goes very deep when we do this with ancient monuments all around the world. Great, great discovery. Here you see the Forbidden City in Beijing. It is the oldest structure in the city and the rest of the city is oriented around this ancient core and that is why the city of Beijing is currently mainly currently oriented and the further away you go from the core of the city from this forbidden city the more chaotical it becomes this way you can discover that cities contemporary cities are oriented around ancient cores and then we go to Mexico we are looking at Mexico City, and Mexico City is clockwise oriented. And the orientation of the neighboring structures, contemporary structures, is oriented in the same way as the ancient pyramid is. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Why is this? Because it starts with this ancient structure and then a road along it, another building, another building, and so it grows slowly around this ancient course. And there are probably many more ancient foundations in Mexico City, where no one knows about. And newer structures are probably built upon this ancient core, ancient foundation. And here you see again, the whole city grid is oriented clockwise to a very ancient pole. And then we go to the biggest pyramid in the world. Yes, the pyramid of Colula. There's even a, a, a church. The Spanish conquistadores built a church on, on top of this pyramid. But this pyramid is clockwise oriented to an ancient pole, by the way. And the whole city neighboring this pyramid is also oriented in the same way. You see that clearly. So this is what influenced... The orientation of contemporary cities and then we go to of course Teotihuacan a massive ancient city uniformly clockwise oriented to pole 3 by the way an ancient pole but the neighboring contemporary city is also oriented in the same way so you can see that ancient monuments influence contemporary orientation and we are the first to be aware about this in our research. Very, very interesting. And here you see the white pyramid. They call it the white pyramid. It is counterclockwise oriented, also to an ancient pole. But you see that this whole area around this agricultural plots, buildings, roads, many of them are oriented in the same way. So. This is how you can see how ancient structures influence contemporary orientation. This is how it happens. This is why areas are oriented in the way they are. And I want to thank you for watching and for your attention. 
拜拜。